Good morning. It's Leanne Peters here. I'm from templeofbalance.com.au, Temple of Balance on Facebook and Temple of Balance on YouTube. And I'm here to pull some cards and share some guidance for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. That's the 22nd, 23rd, 24th of July 2024. So welcome. I want to send out a big extra special welcome to my Temple of Balance patrons for July, my Pillar of Light members, and all of those of you who support my work through my website. Thank you so much for your support. Your support helps me keep being able to be here. So thank you so much. So I'm coming to you live now from Tasmania, Australia. It is Monday morning here. It's Monday the 22nd of July. And the time is 7.43 a.m. So welcome to you. What I'm going to be doing today, if you're new to watching my videos, I'm going to be using my oracle cards that I created. I've got two decks combined. We've got Animal Kingdom oracle with the ladybug and the speed of light oracle cards here. The black ones. So these have been combined to make a 110 card deck. And I'll be using this deck to find the best cards that the majority of us need for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm not pulling cards for individuals. This is general guidance for everyone. So I trust that you've been led here for a reason. And I trust that something shared supports you at this time. I recommend that you take on board what does feel right and what does resonate. What does fit into your life and what you've got going on. And let the rest go. Let's allow ourselves to be surprised. Let's drop our expectations here at the door as we prepare to enter into this guidance time. Let's allow ourselves to be surprised and slip further into the flow of things. That's my approach here anyway. Good morning, Pamela. Welcome. And Shell's here. And Kate is here from Alaska. Welcome. And it is a fabulous morning, Shell. I, a fabulous Monday morning here, anyway. Um, I'd not long got up, actually. <laughs> so I got straight out of bed and uh, got myself ready to do this video. Because I do like doing these first up. So I haven't checked online or anything. And I'm just ready and raring and excited to go. So think of this as a guide only, and let's see what the cards say. So I'm looking for the best card that the majority of us need for Monday, the 22nd of July. <laughs> if it's not quite Monday for you yet, there is a video I did for Saturday and Sunday. But for Monday, let's look for the best card that the majority of us need for Monday, the 22nd of July. And the best card is this it's an animal kingdom oracle card and it's this for monday it's the penguins card 37 and it says unbreakable bond so this is talking about an unbreakable bond or connection that we have with another person so this would this typically comes up when there is distance so maybe um, the person that we're closest or someone that we're really close to, a child or a partner or a friend is away at the moment and there might, there might be a distance. Um, also, this card can come up when our, we have a special bond with someone in spirit and they may have passed away. So there may be that um, not only distance but also space um, and time, I guess. What would you call it actually? Well, physic physical, um, yeah, well, there's that distance there. So this can come up for uh, spiritual connections we have as well as distant uh, connections also. It doesn't tend to come up for people that are right with us right now. So it does tend to highlight just this bond that can't be broken, can't be broken through time or space, and it certainly cannot be broken through death either if this is applicable for us. So why would this card come up? This card will come up to reassure us that we have a strong connection and a strong bond with this person um, and to find nourishment and comfort in that, that um, if it's someone in spirit that they're close by, 
even though we can't see them or touch them anymore, that they're not far away. So to trust in that bond and that connection and to feel it. If it's a new uh, loss and someone that's fairly recently passed away, it can be kind of difficult to feel them at the beginning because our grief can be so loud and so strong. So this is um, highlighting that underneath that grief, there is a bond and a connection there that cannot be severed. And if we've got someone we love who's away at the moment or who's left the nest, if it's a child who's left the nest, for example, then also highlighting that bond. So love, there's a bond of love between us and others. Now, if we don't have someone who's at distance at the moment, then this would be highlighting that special bond and connection of love that we have with others. And it doesn't have to be an intimate sexual love in this particular case. It can just be a special connection that we feel with another person. And to really feel those connections feed us and let us feed them as well. Feed the connection, feed the bond itself through maintaining and putting effort into our relationships. So bond, connections, love, relationships are powerful at this time, especially on Monday as we start the new week. So thank you. Now I'm looking for the best card for Tuesday. That's the 23rd of July. Louise is here. Welcome. And Pam's feeling her mother's energy who passed three months ago. Yeah. Yeah, feeling her beautiful energy there, Pamela. Hi, Sam. And Robin's here. Good morning, Robin. So the best card for Tuesday, the 23rd of July, for the majority of us, is this. It's a Speed of Light Oracle card. And it's this. It's Purification, card 8. And it says Cleanse, Detoxification and Toxins. So this is a highlighting on Tuesday. It'd be a great time to purge, to clear, to release, to purify, to get rid of some stuff. So this could be, or it's usually quite physical stuff, but it doesn't have to be limited to that. So it could be having a spring clean, could be clearing out a cupboard or clearing out our pantry, clearing out a room in our home or our car or our vehicle. Um, it could also be going for a, a clearing or a purge inside us. So we're looking at physically, maybe some of us feel like we need to have a detox, especially if we've been feeling heavy in our body, heavy and bloated. Whenever I feel heavy and bloated in my body, I know I need to just have a little detox from some certain types of food. Maybe that I've maybe I've been having too much food because I notice that sometimes happens too. So then I need to just back off on food just a little bit and give my body a little chance. And sometimes it's a few days, depending on how serious it is. I try and nip that bloated, heavy feeling as soon as possible, like that day or the next day. So if it's something that's accumulated, that's perhaps been ignored for a while, maybe a few months, weeks or months or, or years, uh, then it might require a longer period of detox. But I know for me, I try and nip it in the bud very quickly. So I only need a couple of days of detox. And then I might um, like serve my meals on a smaller plate and just try and move through that hunger feeling just a little bit until I eat that sort of thing. And I find that a really great way to just kind of get my body back into feeling okay in itself. So what do you need to clear or detox, especially from your body, if that speaks to you? And also this card can be talking about emotional or mental detox. So clearing um, old emotions, especially if we've been awash with a lot of big emotions lately. Or mentally, if we've got a lot of useless, unnecessary thoughts rolling around in our heads, you know, the monkey mind. So if we've got thoughts that are just playing around in a loop and when we stop and think about it, we think, wow, that's a really silly thing to be thinking about. Um, so trying to catch that too before it gets into a bad habit is really helpful. And then resetting and choosing some thoughts that are more supportive and healthy for us. On an emotional level, it could be if you've been feeling really emotional lately and you've just got these big emotions just washing over you and you just feel quite emotional 
like oh, perhaps overly going towards the overly emotional then it could be a good time to to clear that so how would you clear that probably have a good cry for one if you're feeling awash with emotion what I like to do if I'm feeling like I've got to cleanse and clear things emotionally is I will be um, I'll work with the element of water quite often and I'll when I'm in the shower I'll really focus on um, the water washing away those old emotions you can do it for mental energy too um, I also like to write in my journal and really just get clear about what my emotions are. How do I feel right now? How can I put words to describe that feeling? Um, or is it a picture or a colour that I might be, be uh, might be better to describe that feeling? Because when I understand why I'm feeling this way or what the feeling is, then it's no longer um, needs to be as loud to try and get my attention. Because that's what happens. Things get louder. Things are amplified because they're trying to get our attention. And if we're feeling over-emotional, then there's um, something that we're not quite getting on an emotional level that may be something we're out of alignment with, something we're out of balance with, that something that's not working for us in our life. Um, it may be something we've retreated inside about because um, it's a difficult situation. But I, when I'm going through that emotional clearing or emotional healing, I really want to understand why I feel this way, why I feel this way, and why am I, um, why am I holding on perhaps to those feelings? Why aren't I letting them move? So this is a great time on Tuesday and maybe even Monday too um, for purging, for clearing, for letting go, for surrendering the things about us on a physical, emotional or mental level or and mental level that are holding us back that we feel stuck or stagnant with so this is a great day to get energy moving by letting go letting our hold go is probably another key there are you holding on too tightly to things that aren't working for you on a physical emotional or mental level and if so why and do you need to be having such a tight grip on this situation can you let go a bit can you surrender can you let things happen let things flow let things work themselves out or do you have to be in control because holding on so tightly to something suggests that there may be a an element of control there that we're trying to have because we don't want change to happen we fear that that person's going to leave or whatever it might be so can you let your hold go? Can you surrender? Are you holding on too tightly to something that's not working for you at this time? It can only get better by letting that hold go. Leave our life as well. So that's just part of what might happen. So now I'm looking for the best card for Wednesday, the 24th of July, 2024. I love it when dates line up. So the 24th of the 7th, 2024. And the best part is this. It's another Speed of Light Oracle card. And it's this. It's the Temple of Maya. Card 51. This is an exciting card. It says Manifestation, Revelation and Purpose. This card brings purpose and meaning. There's something substantial about this card. So the other two cards that came up for Monday and Tuesday suggest... Um, could I say maybe a little lack of clarity perhaps there is energy moving there are bonds that we've been reminded of there is letting go and purging that's required on some level and this card brings something solid something structured it could even highlight a building of some sort like a building that's not our everyday building but something that perhaps we were attending or going to keys that we've just got for a new building of some sort. So that may be applicable for some of us. This also brings structure. It brings purpose and meaning in our life. You know, what is all this for, this journey of life? What is all this, you know, if we're going through a crappy time period, what's all this crap I'm going through for? Or if we're going through a pretty good time period, what's all this good stuff for? Um, so there's meaning that wants to come through with whatever it is that we're going through at the moment. But especially we might find a bit of a light bulb moment happening on Wednesday or around Wednesday. 
as things land and as things fall into place and as we um, we get the meaning a little bit deeper and understand a little bit more why we feel or have felt this way, why we're going through this, uh, why we have this special bond or connection with this person perhaps that's come up on, on Monday for Monday's card. There is a renewed sense of purpose, but this purpose is structural. So it's structural. Um, we could say a bit like a building, but not really at the same time. But it feels to me a bit like, like a building, like um, something that sort of lands, something that's built, something that has foundations, something that we've perhaps spent a long time building up to get to this point. So it could be a realisation of gratitude for what we have. There might be something revealed around Wednesday that gives us a deeper sense of purpose and meaning, which feels quite exciting, but very grounded at the same time. Because the buildings are grounded. They've got their solid foundations. They're not floating around in the air somewhere as a fleeting feeling. This is solid. This is grounded. This is anchored in um, the reality of our life. Now, if we're not feeling it, by the time we get to Wednesday, we might feel, gosh, I don't even feel like I've got a house around me. It feels like it's just gone through a tornado and it's all ripped up and ripped apart. There might be a ripped up, ripped apart feeling as we let our old building, the old structure that we had in our life, crumble. And this did come up in the last video. It kind of feels a bit like that might be the case for some of us, especially coming off Tuesday's purification card and the cleansing element of that and the real need to let go and to surrender our hold on things. So if we're just, if our building, the, the structure in our life is being held together by little bits of tape and the walls are crumbling down and we're trying so hard to make it work, we're trying to, so hard to mend things and to get things back to how they used to be, we might find that that tape is not going to work. It's not going to hold things up any longer. And there might be a part of us that knows this. So we might find on Tuesday, it might be like just letting the tape uh, come off the walls, letting the walls crumble around us. It can feel very confronting and an insecurity may even arise from that, a fear. But then on Wednesday, we've got this new building energy coming in. So whatever comes down, something better is going to replace it. And we can trust that. We can trust in that um, the betterment, the improvement, the flow of things. So this is exciting. Something manifesting too. Something we've long dreamed about perhaps will be manifesting. And this is certainly the case for me because I've got a big project coming up, which I'm going to announce next month. And we got keys. We've got keys and the keys uh, to the building. So this is very much on point for me personally. And things are manifesting that we've long held in our hearts and we've long been perhaps working towards. So very exciting. Let's see what happens. See if this resonates with you as you move through your days. And maybe there's some advice or some things that you can think about from this video to help you through your days to come. It feels like there's potentially a lot of stuff happening in the next couple of days. In fact, Monday might be our best day for just sort of um, not necessarily sitting, but embodying those connections that we have with those really important people in our life. And sometimes it's good to write down and really think about or even connect with these people, especially if they're still here in their body um, and how important these people are to us. There might just be a handful. There might just be one person. And if there's no one that you can think of that you have a special connection with, then um, I would definitely be um, proactive in looking for some people to connect with, uh, joining some groups, meeting some people, and putting ourselves out there. So there are our cards for the next three days. Thank you very much. I am going to pull a theme card in just a minute. Before I do, though, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Please show us some love. Please comment. Please share if you're, if you're inspired to. And if you'd prefer to connect more privately, don't hesitate 
to send us a message through our website. If you're watching on Facebook, please hit the follow button. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. So what have I got going on? I didn't even write anything down on my thing, uh, on my paper. But if you want to learn more about my cards here that I've used today, if you'd like to start working with them yourself, they, both of these come with a guide book. You can learn more about them on my website. Um, what else have I got? This is the last week to enjoy the Spirit Guide Drawing or Healing Art Sale. That ends at the end of July. That's the end of July Australian time. So it could be the day before the end of July, which I think is the 30th. So I think we have 31 days this month. Uh, the 30th if you're um, in the US, for example. Uh, so that's happening now. I've just released some new ceramics on my ceramics website. That's leannepeters.com. So I've got some new uh, jars and bowls and things there. And we, of course, have our 20th birthday events open now. The bookings are open for events in February 2025. And we've got events happening each weekend throughout February. You can come to one of those or a couple if you want to stay around in the area. But hopefully there's something that speaks to you and works for you. Uh, the very small groups are very intimate and very deep and very connective. And I'm looking forward to connecting again finally with people in person because literally the last physical event that I held like this was our 2020 retreat, which was just weeks before COVID locked everything down. So it's been quite a while and I'm itching to get back in and connect with you in person. So have a look on my website, templeofbalance.com.au if you'd like to learn more about those things or the work I do here. And if you'd like to support what I do and keep seeing my videos and my things, then please consider supporting my work in some way. So I'm looking now for the best card for the theme. The theme card will help us bring these days together and help us see the bigger picture for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. There's a build-up of energy here. I can feel a build-up from one day to the next. So Monday, perhaps a little bit subtler, a little bit quieter, potentially. Tuesday gets a little bit busier. Wednesday gets even busier. So there's a build-up. There's a momentum building that feels over the next three days. That's what I'm feeling as I sit here open to the theme. So what do the cards want to say? The best card for the theme for the majority of us for these days is this. It's a Speed of Light Oracle card. And it's this, it's the dolphins, yes. It's a featured card, which means, it has further instructions here, it says to breathe deeply and choose a random card. We'll choose this, Animal Kingdom, the fox. Oh, yes, this is actually really exciting. Okay, we've got these two cards have come up together for a reason, for our theme. So I'm going to look at them separately first. And then we'll look at their relationship together. So this is Sensuality, card 46. It says, love, breath, relationship and passion. So before I go further into this card, this very much highlights that penguin energy that came up for Monday about an unbreakable bond or a connection that we have with at least one other person. So this is highlighting relationships. It's highlighting special connections that we have with others so this is highlighted now if this is highlighted for you because you don't have it and you've been really missing and you really just want someone on your side you want someone that you can talk to you want a special connection with someone then this is certainly a push to put yourself out there you're not going to meet anyone by sitting back and feeling that that's missing in your life you need to we need to be proactive to bring people or meet people that then ultimately brings those ones that we resonate with um, to us and us to them so we can create a special bond. Now, this card's about feeling deflated. If you've been feeling deflated and flat lately, this is about breathing life back into ourselves again. So if you've been feeling flat and deflated like a balloon that's losing all its air and you're feeling something like... Um, lifeless um, and perhaps you're losing your will to live maybe you're losing your will of life um, maybe you're breathing very shallowly as well you probably are if you're feeling that way if you're feeling deflated 
This card is about revival. This is about breathing that life back into ourselves again and getting ourselves breathing again, stoking that inner fire again. If that inner fire within us has been, you know, we've just got a few coals left and, and we're, we're really not feeling motivated about life. Breathing will help stoke and, and revive those inner fires. So what, where or what state are you at with your inner fire at this moment? How much, how deflated do you feel about life itself? And over the next few days, there's opportunity for us to revive things again. So revive things in our relationships or look for new people to connect with. It takes time to build a bonding connection with people, but we've got to start somewhere. You know, just joining a group the first time is unlikely, very, very unlikely to create a bond instantly. But if we go regularly and we open up and we get to know others and they get to know us, then over a period of time, and we're talking perhaps months, it could even be years, then we can start developing a bond with someone that we resonate and relate to and they with us. So it takes time to build relationships. So if you're feeling that's lacking, getting out and doing something about it as soon as possible is only to your benefit and the people or person you're going to end up forming a bond or connection with. So relationships reinflated or inflated. <laughs> relationships growing with life again. Using that time that came up on Tuesday's card for cleansing and purging to let go of the things that aren't working, to let go of those, those old coals, to let go of the shallow breathing and breathe life back in again. It requires a letting go of the stuff that we're holding on to, tightly to, that's got no room to heal. So if we're holding tightly to this situation, we're trying to keep the things, the walls up with sticky tape, and we're trying to mend issues with band-aids that go much deeper than that, we might just need to surrender and just put our hands up and just see what happens if things crumble and we let things go. Because something better is likely wanting to come up in its place. Um, and then, well, for Wednesday's car, we had the manifestation. So things want to, um, the momentum wants to build. So there's something deep that wants to open up here. Now with the fox, the fox is card eight. And the fox says to find a way. Now this is the card I was talking about in the last video. Because I talked about the stag. The stag was the life's path. But the stag implies that the, the track is there. This card that I actually did mention in the last reading, this implies that there's no track there. There's no path. So we've been encouraged to find a way to carve out this path for ourselves. If we feel like we're in the middle of the jungle or middle of the bush here in Australia um, and there's no way out, we're stuck here, we're lost here, there's no path that we can find. It's not like the stag where there's a track there, we can follow that out. This is saying that we need to find a way to carve out that path for ourselves we need to get out our um, materials and start slashing through the jungle to carve out this path now. It's up to us to do this. Um, and especially if we're feeling lost in the jungle or lost out at sea. What can we do? How can we motivate ourselves to take some steps in an unknown direction? Everywhere we turn out here in the jungle, there is no path. So we've just got to make a decision out here and we've just got to pick a, a direction to take and we've just got to start moving in that direction and see how things go. Oh, okay, we're heading towards a cliff. Let's go back and let's go in another direction. It's not the end of the world if we need to switch courses as we go. So let's find the courage. There's a courage and confidence, a, a certainty in some ways, a, um, a focus to carve out this path. Now, these two cards together, these are two very motivating cards. So we've been encouraged over the next three days as our theme to breathe life back into ourselves again and to find a way to use that uh, encouragement, that um, starting to fill ourselves up with life again, to actually start creating or move into the next phase, create this path 
that wants to be created from wherever we are now? Do we need to build a new foundations that we can build our next building on if our current building is crumbling and we can't keep things together? Things change. It is natural for things to change. It is not natural for things to stay the same way forever. They don't do that. Relationships come, relationships go. People come, people go. Buildings come, buildings go. And things are always in a ebb and a flow. And if we're holding on too tightly because we don't want things to change, which is usually, usually why we're holding on to those things, then we're probably holding ourselves back. So can you let your hold go? Can you let what wants to fall away fall away? And can you allow the next thing to come in its place? So quite motivating. I do still feel momentum building over the next few days. So it's probably going to be quieter Monday, building up to quite intense on Wednesday, which is not a bad thing. So we might want to take advantage of the quieter day, which is funny because I've already made a note on my whiteboard to vacuum and mop the floors today because I don't think I'm going to have time um, by the time I get to Wednesday or Thursday. So what can we do Monday to make it easier potentially for Wednesday or later in the week? So thanks so much for connecting. This is very inspiring actually and I'm going to get straight into flowing into my day and to my week. So have a good one. Thanks for watching and have um, uh, have a great day. And I'll see you again soon, hopefully. Thanks so much. Bye.